Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Ying Spy. Today we're going to be talking about what is mark of inequality, how to simulate that, and precisely how does that affect money management decisions. Now that's going to be a very interesting episode. So straddle in, pay attention. Now, first let's talk about the definition. So mark of inequality is stating that if you have X to be some sort of random variables, that is non-negative, and say you have a value a that is positive, then the statement says the probability of x greater or equal to a is actually bounded by, and this is the upper bound, so we're going to do less or equal to a fraction that is expectation of x over a. So there you go. Let me zoom in a little bit. That's gonna be the statement. So something like that, it's very interesting. It's highly related to Ying's timer, and it's actually the original idea of how I time stock market. So the idea is this. If you have some sort of random variable, X, uh, say stock returns, today Apple's 2%, tomorrow Facebook is 1%, Something like that, it's going to be your data. It's going to be your X. You're looking at not all the data, but data that is the positive ones. And then you draw a cutoff. Uh, specifically, this arbitrary A can be a tuning parameter, can be anything. So that being said, we have left and side of the formula describing something empirical. We're looking at the data. We're having some sort of cutoff A. We have a probability. On the right-hand side, it's the boundary. It's a theoretical boundary derived, assuming that this is Markovian. So the boundary is actually a fraction of expected return, say EX, over whatever that arbitrary value is. So let's talk about this. Uh, specifically, this library I'm gonna use is called Yahoo Finance, so just Y Finance. I'm already, I've already installed that, so I'm gonna skip that part. Now, we're gonna import that import y finance as yf then what we're going to do is we're going to import some stock price right say microsoft and then we're going to say fy ticker microsoft we're not going to specify time so i'm going to land on that now that's my data let's take a look at that oops let's take a look at the info all right so we have all these information right sector, number of employees, business summaries, uh, the address, website, uh, these are the fundamentals, right? Open price, average volume, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. Let me clear the output. Uh, let me show you guys the information that I need. So I need data and I'm gonna define that as the history price of say max. And the reason I'm on the maximum uh, period is because law of large numbers. So uh, you wanna have as many data as you possibly can so that uh, asymptotically this expectation uh, converges to the real mean, the theoretical mean, uh, which is why you want this to be max. So I'm gonna put a mark say due to law of large numbers. And specifically, we're looking at weak law, okay? So with data being said, now the next thing I need is percentage changes. So I'm gonna define data. I'm gonna run that. I'm gonna define data change to be data percent change. I'm gonna run that, all right? And uh, data change looks something like that. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I need to get rid of the NA entries. Uh, for example, if I print this out, you see there's NA here and you see there's NA here. We don't want that, that's not good. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this ILOC. Uh, the reason we're using this ILOC is because the type is actually uh, Panda data frame, if I'm not mistaken. There you go, so Panda data frame. So that means we can use this index location function and uh, here we're gonna start with row one and then that's gonna be all of the columns boom 
uh, that get rid of the row one. And uh, let me define that as the new data change, okay? Now I need to look at the closing price. So this is going to be uh, data change, uh, excuse me, close returns. So I'm gonna say close, boom. All right, so those are the closing returns. Uh, for example, that's negative 3%. For example, that's positive 0.6%. Um, now I have my data. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is to make sure this condition satisfies. It's non-negative. So let me get rid of that. All right, let's do that. Um, how do I make sure that uh, this left-hand side uh, is non-negative? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trick it. Okay, uh, so if uh, there's a value a that is, so if there's a value x that is zero point, that is negative two, right? Uh, I wanna turn this two into positive. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take square and then take a square root and that's gonna give you two. Okay, so I'm gonna do that mathematically and in terms of programming language, what I'm gonna do is data change, close, and then that's going to take power of two, okay? And then the whole thing, I'm going to take power of half. And that's gonna give me all positive values. There we go. Now I can just define that as converted data change. Boom. All right. Uh, I have all of my X that essentially all these X's are positive. And now I can build the actual left hand side, which is the empirical uh, probability. So we're gonna uh, create an arbitrary A. I'm gonna say this set, set this A to something positive, right? Uh, 2%, all right? We have our A. Now we're gonna look at this converted data change. Uh, we're gonna set this uh, to compare with the A. And then we're gonna put a parenthesis. We print that out. Uh, it's a, a column of true or false. Right, so originally this column is returns. Today is 2%, tomorrow is 3%. This true or false tells me that if that day, that stock return, not just the, not, not the original one, the converted one, is it greater than A or not? Um, and uh, we want the distribution, so we're gonna do value counts. Okay, so we compare with A there are precisely 2,170 observations that's true, that's greater than A, uh, which means out of all of the historical data that we can download from Yahoo Finance, Microsoft successfully produced returns that's positive, that's more than 2% a day over 2,000 times. And that's precisely what the left-hand side is. Now we have the data, we can calculate the probability. So we're gonna, uh, give the name check table equals to that true or false table. And then this probability, okay, this prob, we're gonna say check table uh, zero, uh, excuse me, one, that's the true ones, divided over uh, check table zero plus check table one. And then we're gonna print that out, boom. So it's about 25% of the times. This is empirical data. What about the upper bound? What about theoretically how high this number can go? Okay, so now, which leads us to our right-hand side, theoretical. Okay, and left, the right-hand side, we're looking at expectation over this arbitrary value A. So let's work that out. We're gonna call it the Markov bound. Uh, before we do that, we need expected return. Uh, that simply can be just converted data change mean, all right? And uh, this bound can just be EX divided by A. And we print that out. That's gonna give you a number, 74%. So there you go. Empirically, we calculate the non-negative stock returns. We compare that returns with a random cutoff A and it turned out 25% of the time, it's greater than that. But the upper bound is actually 74%. So it doesn't matter how the stock is gonna act, you can certainly look at the past data and conclude that 
is 25% of the time that uh, Microsoft perform daily returns higher than 2%, but it will never get above 74, 74% of the times. So if somebody comes here and say, hey, this stock is a great stock, I'm looking at certain data and it turned out that 80% of the time, the stock is like 5% returns. Well, that statement is wrong. It's wrong because we can see from here from this theory. Before we wrap things up, I want to put everything into perspective. So here we're going to say simulation toy version, okay? And I'm going to put everything in a function. So here I'm going to define function. I'm going to call it Markov inequality. And I'm going to give it a stock name, say Apple. And I'm going to give some sort of cutoff, say 0 0.03. And then in this function, first of all, I'm going to get my data. And then I'm going to calculate returns. Last, we're going to calculate Markov inequality. And then return a probability as well as a Markov bound, okay? So the data is very simple. Uh, we're going to st say stock is defined as Yahoo Finance, grab this ticker function, and then we're gonna uh, call this stock name, which is divided by user. We're gonna grab the actual data. Uh, so it's gonna be stock history. And then this period, I'm uh, gonna say max. So one maximum period. Now, with the data being set, being defined, we want the changes. So that's going to be data uh, percent change. And in particular, we're going to clean this up. So we're going to say data change is iloc, uh, starting from the first row to the entire observation. And it's going to be all of the columns. Uh, with that being said, uh, we can create this converted uh, closed return and that's going to be uh, data change closing uh, returns uh, to the power of two and uh, we're gonna convert it back by taking square root. Now uh, this converted close return is gonna be all positive. Now we're left with calculating the left hand side and right hand side of this mark of inequality. Uh, so we're gonna have a check table and that's going to be converted return uh, comparing with this value A, we're gonna do a value counts. And then the probability is going to be check table, uh, the truth divided by uh, check table false plus check table truth. Um, on the right hand side, we're gonna need to calculate EX. That's going to be converted closed return mean. Uh, and then this mark of bound is going to be EX divided by A. Enter, boom. All right, now we have the function. Uh, we can start some simple simulation. Let's say I want to see Apple uh, comparing with 0 0.02, boom. Empirically, it's 38%, but in theory, the upper bound can actually be 98%. So Apple has a lot of potential, right? You never know what is gonna happen. You could very well hit into a certain range of a certain period of data that's either in the past or sometime in the future that this thing goes to the moon and it will just continuously for, uh, for days, for months, for days, for weeks, for months, it's just consistently hitting that 2%. That's definitely very possible. Empirically, it only happens 38% of the times. But if you want to consider the entire universe, not just in the past, but also in the future, you need to take that into consideration. So the fun thing about this function is I could very well change this. Uh, for example, 3%. Uh, this number is going to get smaller. This number is going to get smaller and then maybe you're gonna do 5%. And the numbers change again. Maybe you're gonna do 10%. The number getting smaller again. So there you go. That's pretty much how you think about it. Conversely speaking, it's the same. If there is a day when Apple is returning negative 10%, okay, then that probably happens only 
0.7% of the time. Then if that doesn't happen a lot, then that's gonna be a low of a price that perhaps you should take advantage of. So that's the kind of way to think about risk, right? Um, if something that doesn't happen a lot and it hit a, uh, hit a certain level of low price, then perhaps even though on the chart, even though on news, it looks scary, but that actually is a good time to get involved. And that's the core philosophy behind Ying's timer, behind how I time stock market. Conversely speaking, it's also a good reasoning, a good philosophy to help you to make money management decisions. For example, before financial crisis, people love subprime mortgage. People looking at the data, people say, hey, uh, the probability that uh, people default on their mortgage is not that much, right? It's like zero point something percent. But if you look at the probability, even this, this is zero point something percent, the upper bound could actually be 19%, 20%, 30%. So on paper, it seems like one person is gonna default on your subprime mortgage, but in reality, it could be much more than that, 50%, 60% of the time. So what that means is, if this is not an investment, if you're betting against the market, if you're betting on something that could be defaulted, then you think the opposite. You better set aside the amount of money for recovery up to the amount, not just empirically, but also theoretically. If you don't meet that amount, you're just looking at empirical data, you're not taking into all the circumstances, you're not taking into all of the situation. Then if you don't do that, and when shit happens, it's gonna hit the fan and it's gonna hit the fan hard. And it's gonna spread all over your face and you're gonna file chapter 11 and you're gonna file chapter 13. So there you go. I hope you liked today's episode. If you wanna support the channel, give a like and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next episode.